it slow. Hi, I'm Haley, and, and we, we are Wrestling, wrestling Wind Down. Down. On this week's episode, we're bringing you guys the results of our first ever Wind Down Awards. We took to Twitter to ask you guys what you thought were the best matches of the year, the best wrestler of the year, and NXT's breakout superstar. So grab your glass of wine. We're going in for the three count. Before we kick off this week's episode, we have a special congratulations for Haley, who graduated from college this week. Haley earned her Bachelor's of Arts in Journalism and Media Studies with minors in Political Science and Film. How does it feel? Well, I'm done. It's crazy. Graduate life. Yes. I don't welcome. know. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> so as we mentioned in our intro, this is our first ever Wind Down Awards. We took to Twitter. Our Twitter's at WWDCAST if you aren't following us yet. And we asked you guys a lot of questions regarding wrestling in 2019. This year was such a huge year in professional wrestling. With NXT's debut on the USA Network as well as the inception of AEW, we just had to know what you guys thought. So to kick off the Wind Down Awards, we started with the tag team of the year. The Undisputed Era came in sweeping the section and taking 55% of the poll. The other categories were Kabuki Warriors, which came in second, The New Day, which came in third, and The Usos, which came in last. This category actually surprised me. I didn't really expect the Undisputed Era to pick up the win here. I think with everything that happened with Kofi Kingston this year, I really expected New Day to be a little bit higher in the votes, as well as The Usos. The Usos have such a strong following on Twitter specifically, their fans are diehard, so I definitely did not expect them to come in last, but I think Undisputed Era has had such a magical storybook year with holding the NXT Tag Team Champions with Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole being the leader of the group as the NXT Champion and Roderick Strong picking up the NXT North American title from Velveteen Dream. They've just had a year, and I feel like their fans are, they are diehard as yes, well. Yes, they are. But... I don't know. I definitely thought the polls would be a little bit different from this one. What did you think? I think that, you know, Kofi kind of had his own year. Hmm. And the New Day, of course, they were together the whole time and they were hyping him up. Yeah, and they also had tag team championship reigns this year. Yeah, but I definitely think that since Kofi did his own thing, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of separated him from the group for a little bit. So I kind of understand why they didn't win. You know, we've seen a lot of mistakes the Usos have made outside the ring this year, and they haven't really been to the forefront of WWE in the past couple months. So I think that that's why they didn't win. The Kabuki Warriors, I didn't expect them to come in second, honestly. I feel like yeah. they just recently became a thing. And right. I mean, they're doing amazing, but I didn't expect them to beat the New Day and the Usos. I think they definitely scored high because they were the only female. Mm hmm group in this category it was very hard honestly to put these together because you know twitter only has four categories that you can put on a poll and with everything that's happened this year you think of sasha banks and bailey as tag team champions peyton royce and billy Kay as the first ever wwe women's tag team champions it was hard to really put four in a category and only include one team of women so i'm glad that they came in second but definitely didn't see it as well yeah. i think that they really rose and started shining more towards the end of the year. They definitely yeah. did. Our next question that we asked you guys was, what was the OMG moment of the year? This was another category that was extremely hard to just put four nominations for. Kofi Mania swept this one, and obviously we know why. Yes. That, wow. OMG. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, second was the debut of The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. Third was Sasha's return, and fourth was Bailey's heel turn. As we said, Kofi Mania was probably the best moment of the entire year. It still gives me goosebumps to go back and watch it or see photos from that night. Just seeing how happy Kofi was and his, his family's reaction. Exactly. Oh. His family's reaction, his tag team partner's reaction. It was just such a great moment that I feel like will go down in WWE history forever, mm -hmm. especially since he was the first African WWE champion. Now, personally, I don't think that the way they're using him now is any good at all. I think they're just trying to keep the New Day relevant and make sure that since Xavier Woods is injured, they want to keep the New Day running and making sure that they're still on top of the tag team food chain. But I don't really see how Kofi Kingston should be involved in that, to be honest with you. I think he has such a strong 
WWE Championship run that came to an end so disrespectfully that I think he has what it takes to be a single superstar. Now, in 2020, I hope that he'll go back to the forefront of being a singles competitor, but I honestly feel like WWE is treating him like a one and done. Now, he just did sign a new contract. All of New Day did. They signed a new five-year contract with WWE, so that gives him five more years to propel and be the best single superstar that he possibly can be, but I don't know. I feel like WWE kind of was like, here, this is what you want. Take it. Take it already, damn Mm -hmm. it. And now they're kind of like, well, we need to keep the New Day relevant, so let's just put Kofi back in there. And it's like, that's not where Kofi's path was going, in my opinion. I feel like we just needed him to still be a single superstar. And I feel like we will see it this year. I'm just impatient. (laughs) It'll happen. I don't see a storyline that he really fits into right now. And so I feel like that's what WWE is waiting for. I think that once something actually makes sense for him to be in it, then he will shine and it'll be amazing. But yeah, that was the best moment of the year. There were so many others to think about, but those four, you know, really stood out to us. Definitely. And I think the return of Bray Wyatt as the Fiend was such a huge moment that a lot of people didn't expect. I think a lot of people counted Bray Wyatt out after he went off for a while Mm -hmm. and he had a baby with JoJo. People didn't really think of him as much anymore. It was kind of like he was an afterthought. And then we start seeing those weird promos and we're wondering what the f*** is going on. And then we finally see The Fiend come to life and I think that's been such a huge pivotal moment Mm -hmm. in his career and the whole path that he's going down with The Miz and Daniel Bryan. We see Daniel Bryan cut his hair. Looks like a baby. Daniel <laughs> Bryan literally does not age. That is what happens when yep. you mind your own business and you are vegan. Okay? I agree. <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> I think that The Fiend is just incredible at this point. He's on fire. And wow. I I think next year he definitely is going to pick up yeah. for him to the create this, moment. For him to create this whole new character out of nowhere is just insane and the way he's going about it is still so good like it's still so crazy and creepy so it can only get better from here i have to add in the moment on smackdown last week where monroe their daughter ms and marisa's daughter was involved and the fiend put sister abigail in her crib and Honestly, Monroe OMG. was the star <laughs> of that was. promo. Like, she she cried at the right moment. She knew everything. Yeah, like, she hit her cues. <laughs> now, a poll that he actually did win in was the best return of the year. Bray Wyatt took this section, you know, and I'm not surprised by this. Right. The other options were CM Punk on WWE Backstage, Tommaso Ciampa, and Batista, who surprisingly got zero votes. I think Batista's return was so far back in 2019 that a lot of people kind of forgot how pivotal that return was. He attacked Ric Flair, who, as we know, he was with Ric Flair in Evolution. He's credited Ric Flair as being his mentor during his career. And he ended up going against Triple H in this year's WrestleMania. It was a big moment. This was Batista's last year as a competitor or his last moment as a WWE competitor and he now he's going into the Hall of Fame next year you know some people were wondering why we didn't put Sasha Banks in this poll and even though she had a great return everything that came after her return didn't seem like like top-notch WWE quality you know they didn't make it worth it for her to return which is really disappointing like she should have gotten the belt she should have she should be at the top of the women's division right now but right. she's not. I feel like they set her up when she returned to the point where everyone thought that she was going to win that title. They had an episode for her on WWE Network where they covered her time after WrestleMania through to her return. And it showed everything that she was going through behind the scenes. And honestly, I felt like with that special, I thought they were going to put the bell on her immediately. And we still haven't seen her with a championship belt. And it's been months now. I feel like WWE... Her. A return is supposed to be a 360 thing. Mm-hmm. You are supposed to have a return and win that belt. And I feel like they just haven't done that with her. Now she's on SmackDown. She's attacking Lacey Evans, who I guess is a baby face now, in front of her child. I get that they're trying to hype her up as this heel character that is a badass and no one can with her. But put the belt on her. Then we know that no one can really f*** with her. Of course Sasha had a great return, but it hasn't been the return that I think a lot of people expected. In my opinion. Like comparing it to Bray Wyatt's return, night and day, two different things. So like we talked about before, this was an amazing year for Kofi getting the belts, you know, having his reign. 
was amazing. So for male superstar of the year for Raw and SmackDown, Kofi came up on top. The other options were Roman Reigns, Baron Corbin, and Brock Lesnar. And Brock Lesnar got no votes, which I find hilarious. I mean, he kind of (laughs) sucks. Oh, my God. Okay, we're getting very blunt for the end of the year, I guess. You know, like, he ended Kofi's reign in such an awful way, and that's why I think he got no votes. I think that, you know, people aren't a fan of him. He's a heel, but he's too much of a heel. I get what you're saying. I think Brock Lesnar does such an incredible work as a heel, but... He also has been this character that it's his way or the highway. Mm -hmm. You think about when he lost the belt at WrestleMania to Seth Rollins. He was out of there. He didn't even stay for the whole show. He was done. And he's done everything on his terms. And I think that's what makes a great heel. Now, I'm not a fan of Brock Lesnar personally, but I think he does such a great job in making the fans hate him and despise him. Now, there's some fans that absolutely love him because they've watched him for so many years and they just like his style in the ring. But I just think he does a good job as a heel. So I'm surprised he didn't get any votes. And I'm surprised Baron Corbin didn't get any more votes. I think Baron Corbin has done such great heel work this year, winning the King of the Ring tournament and just having this persona as being such an asshole while being dressed as an Olive Garden chef. It's just it's been so captivating For audiences. And, you know, in the beginning of the year, I just wasn't into Baron Corbin. But now I'm kind of like, hmm, he might be good. Now, I'm not a fan of this whole thing with him and Roman Reigns. Like, it's kind of a waste of my time. But I think that he definitely is WWE Championship material. I see him winning. If it's not the WWE Championship or the Universal Championship, the Intercontinental Championship or the United States Championship in 2020, I think he's doing so good. Like, there's no way that he can't win a belt yeah well my issue with Brock is he's not there all the time and then my issue with Baron Corbin I feel like he might have lost a lot of votes for the whole Shorty Gable thing absolutely like that was one of the weirdest storylines of this whole year but I think too it's weird that WWE actually changed Chad Gable's name to Shorty G like sometimes like just isn't funny like you just don't go with it and that was definitely one of those moments yeah and now he's dressed like he's in space jam i just it doesn't make (laughs) any sense to me and roman reigns came in second for this category and roman reigns has a great year this year um back in february he announced that he beat leukemia and that was an amazing moment and you know i think that 2020 will be a great year for him you know being a leader in the locker room and Mm -hmm. a leader for all of these other wrestlers i think that you know, 2020 will go well. I do think for Roman Reigns this year probably was bittersweet seeing that the Shield ended their team. You mm-hmm. know, they had been teaming together for years. And now Dean Ambrose is John Moxley in AEW and Seth Rollins is on Raw. But it's been a year of growth for him. I feel like he's grown as an individual superstar. And now seeing that he's on SmackDown and we've heard in interviews that now he's this locker room leader. And when you think of locker room leader, you think of how The Undertaker was a locker room leader for years and John Cena was a locker room leader. They're just growing him to be this superstar, this main event superstar. And we've talked about it before. I definitely think that he is stepping up into the role that John Cena used to be. John Cena is so Hollywood now, which absolutely breaks my heart, but what can I do about it, right? John Cena is more into this Hollywood persona now. He's not in the ring all the time, even though I've read reports that they really want him to come back for this WrestleMania, but they say that every year, so we'll see if he actually comes back. He came back last year. Yeah, he made a big return. That was a huge moment, and I don't know. I think John Cena, his time is definitely coming up. That kind of reminds me of his intro song, The Time Is Now. I definitely think that John Cena is more than likely going to retire from the WWE ring sooner or later, and there's no doubt in my mind that he'll be in the WWE Hall of Fame. The absolute value that he's had on the WWE, I think WWE really became a household thing when John Cena was on their television. Right. I remember he had a lot to offer. Exactly. I remember when I first started watching wrestling, John Cena was always on Raw every week. He he had the spinner belt. He just was such a legendary figure at that time in WWE. So we'll see how it goes. I think it would be good for him to have his one final moment at wrestlemania and then go into the hall of fame for female superstar of the year becky lynch swept this category with 70 percent of the votes with surprisingly oscar coming in second charlotte flair coming in third and fourth bailey 
Becky Lynch had an incredible year as well. Becky two belts. Yes, Becky two belts. Her, Charlotte, and Ronda Rousey were in the first ever women's main event at WrestleMania, and that will go down in history. It doesn't matter how you feel about Ronda Rousey and her time in WWE or if you want her to come back or not. That was such a huge main event for the women's division that will go down in history that I still get goosebumps singing about because it's just something that you never expected. Mm -hmm. And they did the damn thing. Now, Becky still has her title. She's held her title for a really long time now. And as we mentioned a couple weeks ago, we haven't seen her defend it recently, but I'll sip my wine and tea on that. But there's no denying that Becky has had an amazing year. She's grown her fan base. She's really built her character. When she first came to WWE and she was on SmackDown and she had her first SmackDown Women's Championship reign, I felt like she had like that Irish lad character. Mm -hmm. You know, she was just herself. But now they've molded her into like this kind of like female Stone Cold type character. Like she doesn't give a f She's here. She's ready to fight anyone. And I'm just glad that they stopped with the whole Seth Rollins storyline. I felt right. like that really was not for her. And you could tell they were both uncomfortable. And I felt like ever since she stopped doing all of that and having all that personal stuff in on an actual WWE storyline that she's been thriving. Well, I think that, you know, one of the things that could have hurt her this year was the whole man's man, Seth yeah. Rollins thing. Which, so glad that was shut down, because sometimes WWE, as we see, goes on these tangents with storylines for way too long. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that they listened to fan reaction and canceled that, because, you know, she's an amazing competitor on her own. She don't need no man. Amen. So that's why I think that, you know, she overcame so many things this year, from having two belts, fighting twice every week on both shows... Like, she truly proved how amazing of a competitor she is. For the NXT Male Competitor of the Year, Adam Cole won with 69% of the votes. Coming in second, Velveteen Dream. Third was Johnny Gargano, who we saw return this week. And fourth was Tommaso Ciampa. I'm absolutely not surprised that Adam Cole picked up the victory here. Adam Cole has had, again, like I said earlier, with the Undisputed Era, they've had a storybook year and Adam Cole has had a storybook year he's the NXT champion and he's held this title for a while now and he's shown why he is holding this title he leads a group but he also is able to compete as a singles competitor and he's just done so well and I feel like even as a heel he's been able to connect with the fans so immensely that it makes you like him as what he's doing he's just so damn good that you can't not like him and I don't see the undisputed era going into 2020 and somehow, like, not being the group of the year. I think they're on yeah. top now, and they're going to stay on top for a while. And I definitely see Adam Cole staying on top. Well, Velveteen Dream, I think Velveteen had such an amazing first part of the year, and then he was injured, and now we don't really know where he stands. He hasn't and that, really come back yet. That hurts me. That really hurts me. I sound so dramatic, honestly. <laughs> I think the charisma and the in-ring ability that Velveteen Dream has makes him such a popular superstar, and it makes sense as to why he was voted second, even though he hasn't been in the ring in months. I see him coming back soon. They've mentioned that he's supposed to come back in the early part of 2020, which is amazing. I think he has the capability to win his WWE North American title back or even the NXT championship. We haven't seen him as the main champion yet, and I really think that... That's what he needs, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are still scared that once he goes to Raw or SmackDown, he's going to lose his charisma, and yeah, that is a worry. I think superstars have a tendency to move from NXT. Think of Aleister Black. When he was in NXT, I felt like he had like this dark, mysterious character, but he was so good and quick and agile in the ring that people were just so intrigued by him because you didn't know what he was thinking. You never heard him talk. He was just so mysterious. Now he's on Raw, he's on SmackDown, and you see him in these segments and he's talking and it just, it kind of weakens his character mm -hmm. in my opinion. I felt like he was so much better in NXT because he never talked. He almost was like The Undertaker where it was very rare that you heard him talk and that's what made him more mysterious. Now he's out here opening, doing open challenges and issuing open challenges and it's like, why? Like, up his intro music already it's terrible on wwe television but it was prime on nxt he had such a great nxt run and now he comes up to the raw and smackdown roster and it's like 
watered down. I think that's what so many people are scared of for Velveteen because he has such a large character on NXT that if he gets on Raw or SmackDown, there's no way that they're going to preserve 100% of what he is. Right. And I feel like there's no one like... Velveteen Dream. Absolutely not. You know, sometimes we look at NXT and we're like, wow, that character is just like a character on Raw or SmackDown. Yeah. But there's no one that I can think of that even comes close to the character that Velveteen Dream is. I do think it's interesting with NXT doing their next takeover in the UK and then they're going to come back and do one in Portland, Oregon in February. Yeah. That I think Velveteen Dream is going to be clear to compete by then and he's going to come back and he's probably going to challenge Roderick Strong for that North American title that would only make sense for his return as we see that Roderick Strong and the Undisputed Era were the last people kind of involved with Velveteen before he was injured I was surprised to see that Johnny Gargano only received nine percent of the votes he did pick up his first NXT championship this year and a lot of the fans really like that Johnny Wrestling has been such a huge figure in the NXT community for years now You know, I think with his thing going on with Finn Balor and Finn turning against him, and now he's back. He came back this last week. I definitely see 2020 being a big year for him. I think his battle, his upcoming battle, as I should say, with Finn Balor is going to be an epic one. I think they're both so good in the ring, and they have similar styles that it should be a good match. And I think it definitely won't be like a one-and-done match. I think they'll have a a good feud. Yeah, because he came out this week. It was just so fierce and so violent to Mm -hmm. Finn Balor. Like, it's going to be so interesting to see how this plays out. I'm not surprised that Tommaso Ciampa only received a little bit of the votes here. Tommaso was out for a huge part of the year with Mm -hmm. a neck injury. He was an XT champion at one point, but then he had to relinquish the title to rest and come back. And he ended up coming back late in the year. So it, it makes sense as to why he didn't pick up the win in this category. Now for... NXT Female Superstar of the Year, this one actually shocked me. It was a tie. A three-way tie. Yeah. So Shayna Baszler, Bianca Belair, and Yo Shirai tie for this one with Mia Yim picking up absolutely none of the votes. I don't understand how this one worked out. Me either. I mean, Shayna Baszler had an amazing year. This was absolutely Shayna's category. Yeah. But Shayna should sweep this one. I think... In total, with, like, her reign now and her previous reign, it totaled, like, over 500 days, which is longer than Asuka's reign. Yeah. So, yeah, she should have won this, but, you know, Bianca Belair had an amazing year. Absolutely. I think Bianca Belair has had an amazing year, but she could have had a more amazing year if she would have been given an opportunity to win the NXT Women's Championship. Now, we see Rhea Ripley is the champion now, and Bianca is very adamant that she wants an NXT championship opportunity, which is absolutely well-deserved. And Yo Shirai also had a great year. She turned heel, and now she's this evil character. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw this video online that has been going around, but at the show this previous week, someone mentioned that she needs to go back to China. And she's not from China. She put her head outside the ring. She said, Japanese (laughs) And she then goes into a full split. Yes. I'm here for it. I think 100% I saw her. stand up for yourself. I don't know if you saw the Sami Zayn video, too. That one, crazy. There's a fan in the audience, and he was yelling homophobic slurs. And he kept saying stuff to Sami Zayn. And Sami Zayn is trying to just stay in character, ignore him. And I guess it really got to him because he turned around and he started cussing him out. Hmm. And they kicked the guy out. And I think this is something that should go on in the new year. I'm not saying that superstars should be violent towards fans, but fans need to know how to contain themselves at these events. We've talked about it before. When you go to an event with wrestlers, that does not give you the clearance to say anything you want or act anyway and expect them to just take it. And I think a lot of fans, maybe they get drunk or maybe they do whatever, and they go there and they think, I'm just going to say anything. But no, no. you can't. First of all, you should never say anything like that. Second of all, you can watch it from home. You can watch it from your TV. I'm glad she stood up for herself. And you know what was great about it? She was still in character. Yeah. Because she's this evil character. So no one really thought anything was wrong with it. But fans online were like, that's what he gets. And I 100% agree. That's what he gets. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't can't do that. Let's not take being a into 2020. Just saying. Leave that behind. (laughs) Out of here. (laughs) Scored zero votes in all categories. (laughs) But as we were saying, I think Gil Shirai had a great year. She had the first ever steel cage match with Shayna Baszler earlier this year, which yeah. epic moment. Amazing. And 
I see her going into 2020, very strong year. She might pick up the NXT Women's Champion. Who knows? I definitely see her competing for it. So for Breakout Star of the Year, we had some really strong competitors in this category. Mufasa Ali won this category with 39% of the votes. Nikki Cross came in second, Ricochet came in third, and Andrade came in last, which hmm. I feel like Andrade had a really strong year. I thought that he would I feel would've... like this one was rigged. Rigged. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Andrade probably got, you know, some of the most individual TV time, but Ricochet had a strong year. Absolutely. He came up with Aleister Black, but ended up having a stronger year, in my opinion, than Aleister Black. He was in the Men's Survivor Series team. He's been on Raw frequently Mm -hmm. i was surprised that he didn't get more votes in this category but i mean him and nikki cross almost tied nikki cross had 23 percent of the votes ricochet had 22 right and i think nikki cross had a strong year i think we were all worried about where she would fit in once sanity got pulled up to the main roster and sanity is disbanded there's really not a storyline with them but nikki cross has had a storyline with alexa bliss and picked up and picked up a wwe women's tag team championship along the way so i think she's had such a strong year she's had character development she's had matches with such incredible superstars that i hope she keeps this momentum going into 2020 i see alexa bliss turning against her at some point and being a single superstar alexa bliss is very competitive and i feel like she's gone without a singles title for way too long yeah and with 2020 coming i'm sure naya Jax is coming back sometime soon you know she's out with two torn acls I don't know. I see them being a team for some reason. Yeah, I definitely see Alexa Bliss doing something crazy because she's come out and said, you know, she wants more TV time. She misses right. the days where she was actually on the shows. Yeah. And so I feel like to stand out, she'll do something like that. For our final category, we asked who the NXT breakout star of the year was. And side note, when I put the first poll up for who is WWE's breakout superstar meaning ron smackdown people were asking why rhea ripley was not in that category but she was in this category and she sweeped it she picked up 56 percent of the votes followed by keith lee with 28 percent candice LeRae had 11 percent of the votes mm-hmm. and matt riddle had five percent i think rhea ripley had a strong beginning of the year she was the nxt uk women's champion then she entered the wwe women's royal rumble but then she kind of like was off the radar for a while She was on NXT UK for a little bit, but she wasn't on the actual NXT roster. And then she finally came up, and she's been, you know, telling Shayna Baszler how it is for the last couple months. And she finally took that damn title off her, like I've been asking for. That was a great moment. An absolutely great moment. Everyone joined her in the ring. It was a lot of the fans in the ring. 23 years old. She's our age. I know. And she is the NXT Women's Champion. I hope that she's a long range. She deserved it. And she did such a great job with the Survivor Series team as the captain for them, as well as the captain at the Women's War Games pay-per-view. I see her being on top of the women's division, either if she maintains her championship reign or she loses it to whoever, (laughs) Bianca Belair. (laughs) I think that she might actually keep this for a while because... She put up such a fight. She beat off Jessamyn Duke and Marina Shafir, as well as Shayna Baszler, last Wednesday. Right. Like, Shayna is the submission specialist. She got put into so many crazy positions that so many other wrestlers would have just tapped out at. Exactly. But she kept fighting and won. She even got the pinfall once, but the ref was knocked out. And so she really won twice, in Mm -hmm. my opinion. I think that she'll have an amazing 2020, and I'm excited to see what happens with this so those are the end of our first ever wind down awards we thank you everyone who voted took the time and voted or tweeted us about what they thought about the awards we'll definitely be back next year with the second edition of the wind down Mm -hmm. awards i think it's been such a great year for wrestling wind down we started in april of this year and it's just been so incredible to be able to connect with people on twitter on instagram who have a love for wrestling and want to talk about it and listen to our show. We appreciate you guys so much, and we're looking forward to seeing what 2020 brings. We also want to give a huge shout-out to Queen of NE. We were featured on her last episode of Queenie Sir Jess, where we talk about why we started this podcast, what we want to do in 2020, and everything else. Yes. So make sure to tune in. She is on everywhere that you can listen to your podcast, same places that we are. 
Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, everywhere. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Wrestling Wind Down. You can find all of our other episodes available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and wherever else you listen to your podcast. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at WWDCast. That is at WWDCAST. Let us know what you thought about the episode. What was your favorite part? We upload episodes every week. Until next time, enjoy your wine and, of course, enjoy your wrestling. Cheers! Cheers.